Hey guys welcome back. This is a story about what if Naruto had a hidden Uzumaki Kekai Genkai. It is unknown to many shinobi throughout the world, even to the clan itself but the Uzumaki clan was a cousin clan to the feared and revered Kaguya clan, the clan that prides itself on war and battle. Although unlikely, it is possible for the Uzumaki clan from Whirlpool to activate the Kekai Genkai Shikatsumyaku. Before we start thank you for all of the support it really means a lot to me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a like you can suggest a Naruto fanfiction with a link in the comments if you want me to read it. And check the description for the creator of this great fanfic and support them for making this fanfic. So let's start. Chapter 24. I'll give you one chance to forfeit. The long-haired ninja said. To give up this instant and not bear the shame of a humiliating defeat. He said smugly. Thanks but no thanks, I've come too far to give up now. His blonde counterpart said to him. You're a fool, Neji Hayuga said to him. Nothing can withstand fate. Your fate is to lose here to me today. Who's the more foolish? Naruto Uzumaki responded to him. The fool who goes his own path or the fool who blindly follows orders and never questions anything. Enough. Neji charged him and aimed a blow at his chest. Naruto dodged it and avoided another jab at his head and backed it away. Going for the jugular already. I see you don't want to waste any time. Naruto said. Neji smirked at him arrogantly. Why should I waste my techniques and time on a weakling like yourself? I have more important things to do and prolonging this is utter foolishness. He said in response. Naruto rolled his eyes in response. You sound like a yapping parrot. If you wear one, I got a perch for you right here, twirl on it. He exclaimed and held up a certain finger causing Neji's smirk to turn to a scowl and gasps and cries to come from the crowd. Naruto looked around the crowd and let out a mental sigh upon not seeing Jiraiya amongst them. He was hoping he'd be here to root him on but it didn't look like he'd watch him fight. That was a bit disappointing he was hoping he'd be here. No matter, I'll still win. He thought to himself. Neji rushed him and attacked. Naruto dodged his attacks with his speed. He had Kimamaro and Jiraiya to thank for that as his speed had doubled from what it had been, he wouldn't have been able to dodge his attacks if he hadn't. Neji came at him and Naruto continued to dodge as he couldn't engage him in close range with his Juken. He dodged an attack and FPED backwards into the air and threw Shuriken at him. Kaden. Neji shouted and spun and deflected them. Naruto did hand symbols and prepared a Jutsu. Air Cutter. He shouted and fired the attack which Neji dodged and it cut through a tree. Neji then charged him and leapt up and prepared to dive down onto him and hit him in the chest. To his surprise two clones appeared in front of him and stopped his attack blocking them and held him keeping him helplessly in the air. Naruto and Neji stood face to face and then Naruto brought his hand up and slapped him lightly across the face and his clones threw him back. You dare mock me. Neji shouted in fury at him at what he did. That was an insulting move he had done, more so to hurt his pride. You're always talking about how it is your fate to become Chunin and how you are the strongest and none of us stand a chance against you, well it's put up or shut up. Naruto responded. By Akugan. Neji shouted and veins stuck out of his face as he activated his bloodline. Why are you not using my power? A voice echoed in Naruto's head. Use my power now and tear him apart. Kayubi shouted in his mind. The deal's off. Kimamaro wasn't healed, so I'm not using it. Naruto responded mentally. You dare disobey me. Kayubi roared full of fury at him. You may be an all-powerful demon Kayubi but I don't fear or obey you. Naruto said in his thoughts feeling his anger grow. They had made a deal with Kayubi providing the secret to healing his cousin, but Naruto was backing out of the deal refusing to go along with the Biju's plans. He would not let Kayubi take control of him. Not now, not ever. Impudent wretched boy. Kayubi snapped at him. I'll take control of you myself. Naruto's body started to change and for a brief moment his eyes flashed red but returned back to blue. Shut up. Naruto shouted fighting for control. I won't let you harm anyone here. He said refusing to be taken over. Unaware of what was going on he did not notice Neji charge him until it was too late and he was hit in the chest and knocked back onto the ground. Darn it. He muttered to himself and got up. He didn't have the chance to block or dodge that one. Elsewhere, Jiraiya moved through the woods, his entire body little more than a blur. He had to get there, he had to get back to Konoha. If he didn't make it in time it would be disastrous. All he knew, Konoha could be attacked this very instant. 
if he could get there in time, he could stop or prevent the attack from happening or at least notify the defenses so that they'd be able to nullify the attack. Orochimaru's attack could result in the loss of hundreds of lives if he didn't make it there and stop it. He had to get there, he had to stop it before it was too late. I got an ominous feeling in the pit of my stomach. Something bad is going to happen, I have got to hurry. Serutobi, Naruto, please be safe. He said as he ran using all his speed to try and stop the attack. Back at the fight Neji dodged Naruto's attacks and thrusted his palm aiming at his chest, Naruto sidestepped it and grabbed him by the arm. Neji went to hit him with his other arm but Naruto blocked and grabbed that one as well. Suddenly Neji felt a piercing pain go into arms and he cried out in shock and he looked and saw that Naruto had extended the tips of the bones on his fingers and were driving them into his flesh. He let out a cry and tossed him off getting free. He looked at his arms and saw the markings from them. He scowled and looked at Naruto who was all business. Uncle wants me to be the one who leads the Hyuga to greater glory, he thought to himself by defeating him, he or she will force Serutobi to agree to have Naruto get put in an arranged wedding with one of the branch females as he'll need to in order to ensure the Uzumaki survival. He remembered his uncle's words, the head of the clan wanting Shikatsumyaku to strengthen the clan and make them the most powerful in Konoha, even stronger than the Uchiha with the addition of the Uzumaki bloodline as well as their own Byakugan would make the Hyuga the strongest. But Neji did not feel like just being a clog in the machine. No, he would prove to everyone here including Hiyashi, that he was far superior in his style than anyone else's. Not the cage main, not the Ibarame's insects, not the Sharingan, and certainly not Shikatsumyaku. He would prove that his Byakugan was superior to everyone else's. That he, a branch member who if his father had been born first, would have been the heir to the clan instead of his cousin, was the one who would lead the Hyuga to its greatest glory. Not some child with two bloodlines from an arranged wedding. He charged Naruto and struck his attacks at him, Naruto dodged it and moved out of the way. Naruto ducked under an attack and went low to sweep his legs out from underneath him, Neji leapt over it and thrusted his right hand at Naruto's chest. Naruto caught it and blocked it just inches away from hitting him in the chest. He then snapped his head forward and head-butted Neji staggering him backwards. Naruto rushed him and Neji attacked him and Naruto dodged it and grasping his arm again and using his own momentum FPED him onto the ground. Neji sprung up ineffective and so fast that few of the onlookers could tell hit Naruto six times across the chest. Naruto staggered backwards and clutched at it as he felt that one. Neji attacked him again and Naruto evaded him and forming hand symbols created multiple bushes and charged Neji looking to overwhelm him with sheer numbers. Disc, how predictable, Kaden. Neji shouted and spun around and sent them flying into the air and they landed and disappeared into smoke on contact. He stopped spinning and he frowned when Naruto wasn't in sight. Looking for me, a voice said and he turned around and was met with a powerful fist to the face delivered by the blonde. Drilling bullets. Naruto shouted and fired them at him. Neji brought his arms up to block them and they ped through him and one hit him in the arm and stuck with blood seeping out of the wound. Neji reached at it and tore it out ignoring the blood stain. Up in the seat seated next to Serutobi, the masked case cage looked on with interest at the fight. Watching on beneath his covered face at the boy who possessed the one ability he would give a thousand lives to have for himself. Naruto dodged Neji's next series of attacks ignoring the onlookers and the cheers of the roaring crowd. The only thing that mattered right now was the person in front of him. He wasn't thinking about his cousin, Kayubi, or anything else, the only thing that was important right now was his fight. He swung a kick at Neji who dodged it and attacked him and Naruto dodged it and leapt up and dropkicked him in the chest knocking him backwards and onto the ground. Neji instantly recovered and got up. Sakura, seated next to Ino looked on as she watched the fight between them. Most of the crowd was cheering for Neji although Naruto did have a few supporters and gradually as he lasted longer against him he started to gain more cheers. Naruto did hand seals and a pair of bones sprouted out of his arms and he fired them out Neji who dodged them. Naruto revealed a pair of bone swords and charged Neji and attacked him at speed that caught Neji off guard as he didn't count on him being this fast. S so, fast. He thought to himself as he barely dodged Naruto's attacks as his speed was rivaling Lee's, and Naruto unless he missed them wasn't wearing any weighted clothing or anything underneath his orange outfit. Naruto slashed at him and Neji ducked under it and went to jab him in the stomach. 
Naruto dodged it and swung both blades at him and Neji blocked them in just the nick of time from stabbing him in the chest. The two engaged in a test of strength as Neji tried to overpower him and Naruto tried to overtake him. Use my power. Kayubi shouted in Naruto's mind. I said shut up. Naruto snapped back at him. Kayubi growled at him in fury at his refusal. You think I'm going to let a wild demon rampage here? Not on your life. Neji seeing Naruto distracted took that opening to overcome him and performed one of his signature attacks hitting Naruto 16 times in the chest area and knocking him back. He smirked arrogantly feeling his confidence coming back to him as Naruto staggered. I'll admit you're better than I thought you'd ever be but it's not enough, my Jukan and Byakugan is superior to your Shikatsunyaku in every way. He said to him. Now, I'm finished playing around. Now I'll reveal to you the ultimate techniques of the Hyuga clan. Most think that because I am of the branch family I am limited in my fighting style but they are wrong, I've learned and mastered many of the elite Jukan techniques that the main family is only allowed to learn and use. Everyone will witness after I've defeated you the prowess of my genius and ability. On the outskirts of Konoha, the bound Kimamaro could only look on helplessly as listened on. He was currently tied and bound with chains infused with chakra that a janin couldn't break apart. When's the signal? He heard Raiga Kurosuki grumbling. Kabuto will be the one to give the signal to let us know to attack, until then we don't do anything. He heard another voice, seconds by the sound of it. Kimamaro tried to move but couldn't, these chains were meant to hold some of the most insane and powerful test subjects Orochimaru had, he couldn't break them, not in his state even with some of his returned strength. He opened his eyes as he saw a large group of Sound Shinobi and Kurosuki family gang members, also attacking from a different area would be the Suna force as well. Those idiots how could they let those punks escape? Raiga said again Rinmara on his back as he was referring to the Sound Trio who along with Haku had escaped and had fled. Those in charge, Masumi and Yoroi along with a minor underling were instead used as sacrifices for their failure. I swear I'll find and kill him after this. He muttered. Kimamaro saw to Yuya and the redhead was quiet not saying a word. She looked over at him and turned her head back not looking him in the eyes. He let out a soft cough as he looked and saw the arena in the distance. Naruto was there, and he was unaware of what was going to happen. He only hoped was that his cousin was able to put his last words together and tell everyone what was going to happen. Then, the attack would be thwarted and he would live. Sinking further into his despair he ignored all the sounds of talking amongst them as they prepared to attack. Wondering what will happen the inevitable moment he meets his cousin. Jiraiya kept on moving as fast as he could go, the toad Sanin ped through an entire forest in under a minute and to any on-looking animals he was nothing more than a blur. Good, I'm halfway there. He said as he continued to run out of the forest and was starting to near Konoha now. He was using his speed and chakra that he hadn't used since the days he himself was a sensei to the Yandaimi and his team. If I can make it in time I can stop Orochimaru's attack. I just hope I'm quick enough and that Naruto will be safe. With everything riding on his shoulders, Jiraiya continued his fast pace, knowing that it was all up to him whether or not Konoha would survive this day. Back at the arena, Naruto dodged Neji's jabs and strikes and slashed at him with a sword which he evaded. He prepared another jutsu. Neji's body was outlined with several flames around his body, he cried out in shock and tried to pat them away unaware that they were fake. He was unaware of Naruto charging him with a sword in hand ready to skewer him. Naruto let out a battle cry and went to stab him and he raised his head up and saw him and at the lost moment evaded him and he was stabbed in the shoulder area, just narrowly avoiding impalement. He looked at the wound and saw it had cut through his shirt and spilled blood on his shoulder. He raised his head up and looked past Naruto and saw Hiyashi seated with his daughters and the rest of the clan. He gritted his teeth in anger at their judging eyes. No, he would not be defeated here and overlooked. He charged Naruto and went to hit him in the heart. Naruto dodged it and swung at his head. Neji dodged it at the last second but the cloth that held his hitai 8 was hit and cut loose and his headband fell off. Naruto's eyes widened a bit as he saw the markings of two intertwined lines on Neji's forehead. So that's what you was hiding all along. Naruto said as Neji picked his Hitai 8 back up and strapped it on. Those in the branch family who bear the caged bird are forbidden from ever ascending. My father wore this and now I am forced to bear this accursed seal. Neji said to him. A cruel gift from fate. He said bitterly. 
But unlike him I'll prove I'm capable of bringing glory to the Hyuga clan. I'll start by sealing off all your chakra points forever and keep you from ever using Shikatsunyaku ever again. He said and charged Naruto. Eight trigrams. At that Hiyashi's ears perked up. Two palms. He attacked Naruto hitting him with all his power. Four palms. Eight palms. He shouted as he hit him all over his body. Sixteen palms. Thirty-two palms. Several more hits were added on as he hit Naruto all over, from his arms to his chest to his legs and to his head. Not even Hayashi was able to perform that at his age. Hiyashi muttered to himself. Clearly I've underestimated Neji's prowess and learning ability. 64 palms. Neji shouted and delivered 31 more strikes to Naruto. And now to finish this. He shouted and doing the finishing move thrusted his open palm right into Naruto's chest which knocked him backwards and onto the ground laying still not moving. And that makes me the winner, Neji said smugly. He then turned to Genma. He'll most likely be in a coma for a week after all that. Get him to the hospital as that last one will kill him if not tended to. I don't think I have to worry about that, Genma said as his eyes widened so much that Neji thought for a moment the proctor's eyes were going to fall out of his head. He heard loud gasps and shocks coming from the crowd and he whipped around. What? Neji shouted as standing up showing no signs of damage was Naruto. Impossible. That could kill a full-grown man. Neji shouted in disbelief as Naruto stood before him. Hiyashi and many in the crowd were shocked as well as few could stand after receiving an attack such as that. You underestimated dead bone pulse, it's also a defensive bloodline as well as offensive. Using my chakra I can strengthen and make my bones denser and thicker rivaling that of a solid steel wall. That allows me to absorb and withstand any attack that an enemy would throw at me including your attacks just now. And I can still do this as well. He said and a bone sword sprouted out of his arm. You think you sealed my chakra points but you didn't, I'm still capable of using my bloodline and chakra. This is impossible. Neji shouted in fury as his best attack had done nothing to him. Everything's possible, Naruto responded. Now I'll finish this. Neji sneered in anger. I will not lose to a weak clan such as. He was cut off when Naruto slammed his fist into his stomach. Weak clan, get over yourself. He said and slammed another fist into his chest. You claim to have all seeing eyes but you have only blinded yourselves and see only what you and the rest of your family wants to see, refusing to believe that anyone could serve you. He said and delivered another series of attacks and blows to him. A man's bloodline means nothing. It is what he does with himself not what he was born with, that is what determines how strong he is. He said as he kicked him in the side and then head butted him and knocked him backwards. Even if I didn't have Shikatsumyaku I still would have found a way to beat you as I'm winning without using it. He hit him again and again and ignored Neji's futile attempts to fight back. Get over your obsession with fate. It's nothing more than a load of crap. You think all is determined by something else. No. A person determines his or her own fate in life. He said and began a series of attacks. It's over. He shouted and dropped low and kicked Neji in the face sending him into the sky. He then leapt up and appeared above Neji. Dance of the Falling Star Mach 2. He shouted and began kicking him repeatedly in the chest. Naruto delivered hard powerful kicks to him hitting him again and again. He then spun in the air and delivered a powerful kick to Neji's face knocking him out of the air and crashing onto the ground. He landed on the ground and looked on as Neji wasn't moving as he laid there motionless. Hiyashi let out an irritated sigh and clutched a fist at the outcome and his plan ruined. The winner is, Naruto Uzumaki. Genma announced after a few moments. Naruto started to make his way back up into the stands before the crowd could respond when he heard something. Slowly the sound of clapping was heard from one individual. Naruto looked and he saw that it was Aruka Yumino in the stands who was clapping. Beside him Enko Mitarashi started to clap as well. Others although a bit grudgingly slowly started to clap as well and applaud and cheer him. Naruto looked on unsure what to make of it as he scratched the back of his head as many in the stands including Sakura and the rookie nine clapped as slowly many in the arena cheered the fight they had just witnessed. A smile formed on his face as he looked on. Sarutobi smiled proudly looking on when the case cage stood up. Pardon me Lord Hokage but I'm afraid there is something I have to attend to before the next fight. The old man nodded and watched him leave. The case cage exited the arena and slowly a cruel cackle escaped him. How long before those sounds are replaced by the sounds of death and destruction? 
He asked himself as he went to get everything ready. Our next fight was to be Sasuke Uchiha and Gara. Genma said the proctor standing in the arena a short while afterwards. The red-headed boy was already there. However since Sasuke is not here we will wait 10 minutes, if he is not here before the time Gara shall win by default. He explained to the group. Well come on Sasuke now's not the time to copy Kakashi's habits. Naruto said dryly back in the stands. Due to the setup of the matches, he would fight either of them depending on who won this fight. Jiraiya saw Konoha in the distance and grinned when everything appeared to be alright. Yes I made it just in time. Now to hurry before it's too late and stop this attack. He exclaimed and hurried. Back at the arena Sakura looked on as Sasuke still hadn't appeared and he only had 5 minutes left. She looked on as some of the crowd it appeared to be ready to doze off and fall asleep. Bit strange it was after how excited they were during Naruto's match. A feather. She said as a bird's feather floated down in front of her. She caught it and looked at it and for some reason she started to feel tired. Unknown to everyone in a secret area the Glee's wearing medic grinned seeing his genjutsu take into effect. Only a few more short minutes and they would all fall asleep and go into a dreamlike state. And many of them will never wake up. Kabuto Yakushi said with a grin looking on as his temple of nirvana technique was working perfectly. Once they are all asleep we attack. Kakashi and Sasuke appeared in the middle of the arena and looked around confused. Something doesn't feel right. Baruka said looking around as he saw several people falling asleep. Genjutsu. Enko shouted as she noticed the feathers. Stop. A voice shouted up above and they looked and saw standing at the top was Jiraiya. Bringing his hands together he formed seals and broke the jutsu. Many of the people started to wake up not understanding why they just feel asleep. Sarutobi. He shouted at the top of his lungs. We're going to be attacked. That fool. The case cage cursed seeing him. He turned towards Raiga and mentioned for him to give the signal. The swordsman charged his swords and fired a bolt of lightning into the air which was noticed all around. No. Too late. Jiraiya shouted seeing it fly into the air and exploded. It's time, Sakin said seeing it. Send word to the Suna force to strike from behind the moment we enter and engage the enemy. Burn this place and all who live in it to the ground. He shouted and turned and saw the bound Kimamaro being forced to stand up. And you. You know what to do, he said with a cruel smile. Attack. Kitamaru shouted and the sound ninjas, Kurosuki family, and Suna force started their alt on Konoha. Chapter 25. Panic spread throughout the Hidden Leaf Village as swarms of Sound Shinobi and Kurosuki gang members attacked and charged into the village cutting down any who got in their way. Killed them all. Raiga Kurosuki shouted to his men as they swarmed the village. Amongst them, Kimamaro was being dragged by his chains by two men forcefully taking him into the village. W what's going on? Sakura shouted not understanding how that all had just happened. Her eyes widened in horror and shock as a sound ninja appeared in the stands and charged her. Gripped by fear she was unable to move as he hoisted an axe and prepared to chop her. Suddenly a blur appeared in front of her and Anko Mitarashi stopped the attack in mid-swing and kicked him in the groin making him drop it. She then took it and slammed it into his neck him. Move. Move. Get to Kakashi. She shouted at Sakura mentioning for her to go back. A Kurosuki member charged Naruto in the stands and he ducked under the attack and slammed his fist into his gut and knocked him down into the ground below. He looked on at the village as he saw several fights going on. Sound will, sound will, sound will attack. That's what he meant. He shouted to himself finally realizing what Kimamaro had meant. I can't believe this, if I'd had focused on his words instead of who had kidnapped him I might have been able to prevent this. He said cursing his foolishness. He heard a noise and saw two sound nins in the stands threatening and cornering Rock Lee who had his crutches in front of him daring them to attack. Rushing forward he grabbed them by the head and slammed them against one another knocking them out. Get to the others. He shouted at him. I can fight. Lee protested holding his crutches in front of him. They heard a sound and saw a group of men charging them. Naruto dashed at them and several bones sprouted out of his arms. Using them he cut and slashed his way through them, single-handedly defeating them and dodging their attacks. One man with dual claws slashed at him and he dodged and stabbed him in the abdomen. This is no place for a injured ninja. He shouted at Lee who was still there and looked at him. Suddenly there was a sound of more fighting going on and he turned his head and looked and saw several Sunagakur ninjas charging into Konoha as well. 
Sand as well. He said in disbelief at what he saw. Both Sound and Sand were attacking Konoha. So absorbed at what he saw he didn't notice a ninja charging him with a weapon from behind. He heard it at the last second and turned and saw he wasn't able to defend from that attack. Whack. The sound of wood hitting flesh was heard as a wooden crutch hit the man's face knocking him over. Naruto turned and saw Lee had thrown one of them. Alright, let's get to Kakashi, Guy, and the others. Naruto said to him and Lee nodded and they made their way. Naruto. A voice cried out and he turned and saw Kakashi and with him was Sakura and Ino. This is too dangerous to be here, we gotta get the people out of here before we fight back. Watch out. Asuma shouted and suddenly a giant snake burst through a wall and lunged at them. Kakashi dodged it and formed hand symbols and fired a fireball at it causing it to hiss in pain and fled out of the arena. This isn't good, Kakashi said to himself looking on. At this rate the damage done to the village will be terrible, we gotta work fast if we are going to stop them. What about Sarutobi? Naruto asked him. He'll be alright, he may be old but he's more than capable of holding himself in battle should anything happen. Kakashi yurred him. The problem first is dealing with our attackers. We should deal with the sound nins and these other members first, they seem to lack the most discipline and are right now more dangerous at the moment. Sensei, Sakura spoke up suddenly. Sasuke's gone missing, I lost sight of him during the intial chaos and can't find him at all in the arena, what if he's been captured? Kakashi thought it over as this could all be a diversion for Orochimaru to grab Sasuke while everyone was confused. Kuchio's no jutsu. He said and summoned a small dog. Pakun, I need your eye stance. I need you to find Sasuke's scent. Right. The dog replied surprising Naruto that he could talk and it sniffed the air. M, about 500 yards from here, give or take a few inches but he's getting further away as I'm speaking. He explained to them. All right, Kurenai, Asuma, get the civilians and Lee out of here. Guy, take Anko and help the Anbu and the others. Me, Sakura, Shikamaru, and Naruto will go get Sasuke, hopefully we're not too late. Jiraiya formed hand symbols and created a small swamp in the road stopping several sand ninjas in their tracks as they struggled and tried to break free of it. Why on earth would the case cage agree to an alliance with Orochimaru? He muttered to himself. No matter I better get to the sandame before it's too late. Seru Tobi was on top of the tower prepared to aid the leaf village by sending a barrage of jutsus that would wipe the invading force out when suddenly a barrier surrounded the entire tower. Quote exclamation mark. Pull back. Jiraiya shouted seeing it to a group of Anbu who left. One wasn't able to stop in time and upon touching it burst into flames and fell down to the ground below. Jiraiya sensed that it was a powerful barrier and any contact with it would be foolish. He needed to find those who cast it to be able to disrupt it and be able to get in there and save his teacher. The sound four were inside a building nearby using it as a base of operations, from there, Sakin and his brother, Kitamaru, Jirobo, and Tuyuya had cast the jutsu that had trapped the sandame seeing to it that no one would interfere in the battle. Serutobi looked around as he realized he was trapped. A cackling voice was heard and he turned his head and saw the case cage behind him a kanai in hand. His eyes narrowed upon seeing him. Reveal yourself, Orochimaru. He said to him. The man reached up and removed the mask revealing the snake-like face and golden eyes of the snake Sani. Discarding the cage robes Orochimaru laughed at the man who at one time was like a father to him. Not even that fool could save you from my plan. Orochimaru taunted him. Serutobi stared at his former student his eyes full of ice at the child who had grown up to become a monster. Orochimaru when I reach the next world I only hope and pray with all my heart that upon doing so when I meet your parents. He said and reached towards his robes and tossed them off revealing his battle armor underneath. That they will forgive me for you. Elsewhere, Sasuke did battle with Gara while this was happening, the two having their long-awaited match. His siblings had tried to stop him but they had been dealt with. Sasuke dodged his sand skillfully and fired jutsus that was blocked by his sand that protected him. No enemy is invincible, there must be a way for me to get past his defense. Sasuke said to himself as they continued to fight. Gara sent a wave of sand at him and he dodged it and fired a great fireball at him which did not get through his sand. He followed it with dozens of miniature fireballs but they too failed to get through. Gara did hand symbols and fired multiple bullets of sand at him and Sasuke countered by forming a barrier made of fire to block them. You, disappoint me. 
Gara said to him, I thought you'd be stronger than this, you wouldn't satisfy my mother's cravings and hunger of blood at all. He said as sand whirled around him to Sasuke who looked disgusted that he referred to his sand as his mother. I'm not done yet, Sasuke said activating his Sharingan and drawing upon the power of the cursed seal. He started gathering chakra and the sound of many birds chirping was heard. Gara looked on as electricity started to form in his hand. Chidori. Sasuke shouted and thrusted his arm at him charged with electricity and fired the attack. Gara quickly created a double made of sand which took the impact and shattered in his place. An attack that might get through my defenses, Gara said and a part of him almost sounded intrigued by it. Perhaps it's time I take things seriously now. Sasuke felt a surge of power come from Gara as he realized this was no ordinary ninja he was doing battle against. Something far more powerful. Kimamaro continued to be pulled into the village by the two sound nins dragging him into Konoha. Despite his attempts to struggle he was being overpowered by them. With Naruto, he's close, about 100 or so yards. Pakun said to them as they continued to make their way throughout the chaotic scene of Konoha. Naruto. Sakura said seeing that Naruto had stopped. What are you doing? You guys go on ahead, I'll catch up with you later. But, just go. He snapped suddenly. I'll be alright, just follow Pakun sent to Sasuke. He said to her and she nodded and she and Shikamaru and Kakashi went on. Naruto didn't watch them go as he looked on as what was being brought before him. Kimamaro. Naruto said as he looked and saw before him being dragged by chains his cousin. Do as Orochimaru-sama commands, kill this brat right now. One of the sound nins dragging him ordered forcing him in front. Naruto's eyes widened as his words. Kimamaro lifted his head up as the two stared at each other. What's going on? Naruto asked not understanding. Stupid boy, Kimamaro is Orochimaru-sama's servant, his job is to kill you as punishment for running off. He'll kill you and then be executed for treason at the end of the day by Orochimaru-sama. The other sound nin sneered at him. No, Naruto said not believing what he just said. He looked at his cousin and saw how weak he appeared to be. Now, do as Orochimaru-sama orders, kill him. One of the sound nins shouted shoving him forward. Naruto looked at him as blue stared into green. Slowly a pair of bone blades sprouted out of his arms. Kimamaro lifted them up, and turned and drove them right into the chest of the sound nin. What? The second one shouted before he too was impaled. Several bones sprouted out of Kimamaro's body and they cut apart and shattered the chains that were binding him to pieces. Having broken free he looked at Naruto and raised his hand at him. Drilling bullets. He said and fired bones at him which flew past him and hit Asuna Nin who fell to the ground dead and who was about to have attacked Naruto from behind and would have killed him if he hadn't attacked. I will not fight you cousin. Kimamaro said to him. I will not destroy my only remaining family that I have left. I have made my choice. Naruto looked at him and nodded in understanding. He may have served that guy before, but his allegiance now was to him and his family. Naruto and Kimamaro heard the sound of battle going on and saw a tornado of sand gathering. I believe that is where we should go, if we stop that we'll gain an advantage in this battle. Kimamaro informed him as he sensed that was no ordinary tornado. Right, Naruto said and the two went off cutting through anyone that got in their way and the two wielders of Shikatsumyaku fighting together were invincible. Kimamaro has betrayed us. Sakin hissed in fury as Kitamaru reported it to him. That, He'll pay with his life for this. He said prepared to take to the battle himself. We need to stay here to hold up the barrier you dumb, if even one of us aren't here they can get in and aid the Hokage. Tuyuya reminded him, he won't last long anyway with his health. Even if he does kill some of our men, it won't make much of a difference. Tuyuya said to him and the other members. You better be right, Sakin said venomously. Kakashi dodged the Kurosuki members who attacked him and skillfully parried and countered their attacks. Black Tornado. A group shouted forming a tower and spun at him and he leapt out of the way as they destroyed part of a building. Kakashi leapt up and knocked the one at the top off with a kick and then stood on the next one's shoulders who batted at him trying to swipe him. He dodged it and then dropped down delivering a blow to each one and then hitting the ground delivered a powerful kick to the last one sending him into a sign. One charged him from behind and without even looking brought his hand up and elbowed him in the face. These guys are mostly cannon fodder, the real danger's out here somewhere. He analyzed as these men main job was to wear down and tire the leaf out. 
They were getting close to Sasuke as Pakun had picked up his scent and he was nearby. Suddenly Kakashi sensed danger and turned and dodged a bolt of lightning. He watched out of the corner of his eye as it went and hit a tree and burned it. That's no ordinary lightning. He said and looked ahead and saw a green-haired swordsman wielding double blades carrying a bundle on his back staring at him amused as sparks of electricity came from his swords. So, you're Orochimaru's newest lapdog. Raiga Kurosuki, codename, the lightning fang of Kurigakur. He said to the man. Not anymore, I left Mist quite some time again and struck out on my own. Orochimaru has hired me and my men's services. Raiga said to him. I fought another swordsman before, I'm no stranger to the seven swordsmen. I'll eliminate you today. Kakashi said getting into a stance. Sakura, take Pakun and get Sasuke. Stay out of trouble. He told her quietly and she nodded and left. Let us begin. Raiga said as lightning charged from his swords. Meanwhile, Orochimaru's sword clashed against Sarutobi's staff as the two battled. Despite his advanced age, Sarutobi matched him blow for blow and attack for attack. Sarutobi spun the weapon and swung at him and Orochimaru dodged it. He leapt across the roof and doing hand symbols fired multiple shards of ice at him, Sarutobi twirled his staff and deflected the attack not one of them touching him. He then prepared hand symbols of his own and fired a jutsu at him. Orochimaru took the full force of the blow but when the smoke cleared he was unharmed. He emerged from it and slashed at Sarutobi who blocked and swung his staff and hit him right upside the head, Orochimaru if he felt it didn't show it as he lunged at him and his sword graced his armor drawing a small wound. Sarutobi fired a jutsu and Orochimaru formed a barrier and countered by doing a jutsu of his own. Sarutobi made his own barrier which absorbed the impact of Orochimaru's attack and sent it back at him which he left out of the way avoiding it. Orochimaru felt a trickling going down his face and reached toward it and saw a small drop of blood on his hand, a cut from a wound he had received. He smiled evilly and let out an evil laugh. Even in your old age Sarutobi you still have it. He complimented and ate up the blood. He looked out at the village and scowled. It appears Kimamaro-kun has betrayed me, siding with his idiotic cousin. I'll punish him accordingly after I deal with you. He said as he sensed that Kimamaro had betrayed him and sided with Naruto. Bonds between families and friends cannot be so easily severed despite what you might think. Serutobi responded to him. You are a fool to think that Kimamaro would alt his only remaining family. Orochimaru let out a wicked laugh in amusement. You and your foolish thinking that the bonds of family shall strengthen one entertains me to no end old fool. Since you believe it so much, let's put that to the test. Suddenly three coffins raised up and Sarutobi looked on in horror recognizing what they meant. You didn't, he said shock in his voice. Yes Edo Tensai, the art of resurrecting one from beyond the grave. Orochimaru replied. Of course to do so one must also offer a life in exchange, and I just had three pawns ready to offer themselves. He said referring to the ones who failed to get the sound trio and Haku last night and had taken and used them as sacrifices for their failure. One coffin opened up and out stepped a man. The Shodaim Hashirama Senju, a second one opened up and another man stepped out. His brother the Nadaim Toborama Senju, and finally the Yandaimi and father of that wretched Uzumaki boy. The third coffin began to open up but Sarutobi reacted quickly and casting a jutsu destroyed it interrupting it and destroying the body. Orochimaru didn't blink as he saw it get destroyed, a part of him hating the man who was in it more so than the man in front of it. Kill him, he ordered the two former Hokages. Tuyuya down below looked on. Orochimaru's using his ace in the hole, Serutobi must be as powerful as the tales said. She muttered to herself. But I wonder how Kimamaro's defection will affect all of this. If he does in fact join the leaf with what little time he has left, he could turn the tide of battle in their favor. Sasuke continued his battle with Gara, who using his sand had created a twister cutting off others from outside. Sasuke stood in the middle of it and dodged an attack that came from behind. He sensed another attack and twisted his body, weaving and bobbing it and avoiding Gara's attacks as he was seemingly toying with him like a cat with a helpless mouse. Sasuke formed hand symbols and suddenly a torrent of water surrounded him, the water soaked up the sand and turned it to mud and the twister started to die down a bit as it was being weakened. The twister stopped as Gara appeared in front of him. Sasuke threw a punch but Gara didn't even flinch as sand formed around him and stopped it. Sasuke leapt backwards out of his sand's reach. 
Gara fired shuriken and sand made of hardened sand at him and he covered himself blocking it as it nipped and cut his shirt. Gara let out a snarl and suddenly his body began changing form. Part of his body became more animalistic as half of his face became a mixture of a wild animal with evil eyes as sand covered his form and an animal-like tail sprouted out of his back. You die. Gara shouted and lashed at him with a claw-like hand that extended and Sasuke narrowly avoided it. He dodged the next attack and leapt at Gara, who suddenly spun around and smacked him with the tail sending him crashing into a tree which broke apart. Gara opened his mouth and fired a ball made of wind at him. Sasuke in the nick of time dodged it as if that had hit him, it would have killed him. He breathed and panted hard as he saw Gara preparing another one, and this time he wouldn't miss. Sasuke. Sakura shouted seeing it and ran and knocked his semi-conscious body out of the way of harm's path. She after checking on him sensed an evil presence and she turned and saw Gara glaring at her. You are the first to die. Gara said and out swow a claw made of sand, Sakura was unable to dodge it and was slammed into a tree and she slumped over nearly unconscious from the force of it. Gara, with a maddening look in his eye prepared to kill Sakura and crush her when two figures appeared and slashed through the claw-like hand cutting her free. His eyes widened in surprise as they cut her free. So, you're the one causing all this havoc. The blonde said to him standing in front of him. Gara's body shook in fury as he growled like a maddened beast at them as he turned back to his original form glaring at them with wild eyes like that of a demon. I don't know what it is you're capable of but we're going to stop it right now before you harm anyone else. You both dare to fight me. Gara snarled at the cousins as they stood before him shoulder to shoulder as both Naruto and Kimamaro stood together against the Suna vessel. Your blood shall satisfy my mother. He shouted as sand formed around him as they felt the power coming from him, power that would send ordinary men running but they held their ground not backing down an inch from him. There is something important you should know first before we begin. The white-haired shinobi said calmly to him. Whenever an Uzumaki is threatened, a Kaguya will be there to defend. Kimamaro stated as he got into a fighting stance. And whenever a Kaguya is endangered, an Uzumaki will be there to protect. Naruto finished and got into a fighting stance of his own as well. There are old tales used to say about us. That fighting a Kaguya or an Uzumaki alone is like doing battle with a grizzly bear. And unfortunately for you, you're going to have to fight the both of us. The two then charged Gara, preparing to do battle with the Jinchurki of the one-tailed Tanuki. Chapter 26. Naruto and Kimamaro dodged the bursts of sand aimed at them from Gara as they did battle with the Jinchurki of the sand village. The red-headed boy sent his sand after them and they dodged and cut it through preventing it from grabbing them. Drilling bullets. Each fired bones from their fingers at him but his sand protected them from it. We have to find a way to get past his defenses. Naruto told Kimamaro. His sand makes him hard to hit as he doesn't have to move to use it to block. Above all else you gotta make sure he doesn't grab you with it. He explained to his cousin giving him what info he had on him recalling his fight with Rock Lee who had been crippled by him. Kimamaro looked at him and back at Gara, who did hand symbols and fired shuriken made of sand at them which they deflected and blocked with their swords. Gara followed up by sending pillars of sand after them. Naruto and Kimamaro dodged it and each charged and slashed at him but his sand blocked the attacks. Not done yet they threw their swords at him and his sand yet again blocked it. Gara swow his sand at them and Naruto and Kimamaro avoided it. Naruto dashed past him and then charged him from behind. A thousand years of pain. He shouted. Gara's sand blocked his attempted attack. What the was you trying to do? He asked him not turning his head wondering what that was supposed to be. Naruto only grinned and leapt backwards. Gara then looked down behind him and noticed that the kunai he had used had an explosive tag latched onto it. Boom. The tag went off and Gara staggered a bit as the force of it at such close range meant he felt the blast. He was unharmed from it but Naruto dashed at him and kicked at him and his sand blocked it. To his surprise however that was just a diversion as he looked up and saw Kimamaro above him and diving down a great sword in his arms. He swung down at him and broke through the sand and cleaved him in two. Or would have, if Gara at the last second didn't do hand symbols and replaced himself with a statue made of sand which crumbled apart from the force of the attack. The sand Jinchurki formed hand symbols and sand burst out of his gourd and surrounded the area to prevent them from escaping. Your blood will please my mother. He shouted at them and fired his sand at them which they dodged. You can't escape me. 
He snarled and created several spears made of sand and threw them at the two. Naruto and Kimamaro dodged them and each rushed him. Kimamaro swung his leg at him and a blade stuck out of it aiming at his chest while Naruto threw a fist at him and a bone swow out of it. Gara's sand blocked both attacks and wrapped around their limbs surprising them. He then using his sand slammed them into each other and threw them on the ground. I will shed your blood all over this place. He snarled his contorting in anger and lashed out at them with his sand. Sand formed around his hand taking the shape of a gigantic claw and he lunged it at them. It hit Kimamaro who struggled against it as they were in a test of strength and slowly he was being pushed back from the force of it as it was overpowering him. It drove him back and he lost his footing and was slammed into the ground. Gara pressed his claw on Kimamaro's body looking to crush him. Kimamaro. Naruto shouted and rushed at him and formed a bone sword and slashed at the claw. Gara hissed and raised the claw up and swatted Naruto with it staggering him backwards. He then lashed out at him with the claw and Naruto struggled against it as he too was being pushed back. Gara, his face twisted in rage and anger roared as half of his face changed. I will kill each and every last one of you. He snarled as he overwhelmed Naruto with the claw and Naruto found himself being pushed back and starting to lose his footing, he struggled against it when his head lowered suddenly and his body went limp. Gara grinned sadistically and prepared to kill him when Naruto's hands grasped the claw and to his surprise began pushing it backwards. Slowly his hands started to change as they became harder and stronger and his nails grew longer and sharper. Naruto lifted his head up and his eyes had turned blood red surprising Gara as fangs appeared in his mouth. What is this? He shouted not understanding when he noticed a fox-like tail formed behind Naruto. He's one as well. He said not believing that he was one as well just like him. Naruto fought back against the claw and began pushing it back overpowering him. Gara tried to crush him but to no avail as Naruto began walking his way back towards him. He then grasped it and tore it off shocking Gara as his hand returned to normal. Naruto and Aura surrounding him slammed into Gara, penetrating his sand and knocked him backwards. Letting out a cry he knocked him through a tree and bringing his hands up formed hand symbols. You lose. Bone release. Drilling lance. He shouted and brought his hands forward and a large bone taking the shape of a drill appeared out of them and began spinning and struck Gara in the stomach and knocked him through the air. Naruto landed on the ground and his features returned to normal and he saw Kimamaro getting up. He went over and helped him out as it appeared they had beaten him. The two then sensed something and saw several sound nins leap and appear and encircle around them trapping them in a sphere so they couldn't run. Naruto looked around as there must have been over 20 of them. Kimamaro, what now? Naruto asked his cousin as they were surrounded by the sound nins and Kurosuki members. Now things get interesting. Kimamaro responded to him his arms folded across his chest as they looked on at the group of men who surrounded them on all sides. Amongst the three and seemingly the commanders of them was a large one wearing small dark glees carrying a gourd on his back, a small one wearing a purple vest and the final one a dark green haired one who had claw gauntlets on his hands. Move back men, you're in the way. The large shinobi said and the other sound nins and Kurosuki members backed away giving him and the others room. Well what do we have here? Nura you take the blonde one and the traitor is mine. He said cracking his knuckles. Oh what a ripoff. No fair. The shorter one complained. The leader of the threesome only seemed to shrug. Just be happy Tora and Mura that you're getting this chance. You pieces of trash, shut up and fight. Kimamaro said to them not intimidated. What you'd call us. The large shinobi shouted and charged Kimamaro and swung a fist at him. Kimamaro leapt backwards and dodged his attacks the man was strong but slow as he missed his attempts as Kimamaro evaded his attacks and leapt up on a building dodging his fist which broke through the wall. Tora leapt up after him and stood across from him as the two were at a standoff. All right Mr. Big Swow, so you're fast and know how to avoid getting a fist in the mouth. But can ya fight, huh? Tora said to him. Kimamaro only smirked. Take your best Swow right here, he said aiming at his chest. You're dead. The man shouted and ran at him and swung his fist at him. Kimamaro caught it with his other hand and the two struggled in a test of strength looking to overpower the other. Tora growled and snarled trying with all his might to overwhelm him. To his surprise Kimamaro smirked at him and brought his hand up and began overpowering him. Using his other arm he jabbed him in the chest stunning him and grabbing his arm produced a dagger from both his arm and knee jammed them into it and snapped it breaking it. Tora cried out in pain and staggered backwards clutching his limp arm. 
No fair. He protested. I didn't know you could do that. Naruto dodged the attacks of Mura who was deceptively fast. The small man lunged and dashed at him from different angles and attacked him. He stood in one spot and looked around trying to get a pattern from his attacks. You're dead. Mura shouted thinking to kill him. To his surprise Naruto turned and struck him across the face knocking him to the ground. He got up and saw that Naruto was virtually unharmed from his multiple attacks. What how are you still standing? He shouted. Your attacks are weak, you may be fast but your taijutsu strength is non-existent, Naruto said is in truth even if he didn't have the bone armor he possessed due to Shikatsumyaku he'd still be okay. We'll see how you like this. Mura shouted and did hand symbols and suddenly created multiple half-sized copies of himself. Great just what I need, Naruto muttered dryly as he faced off against the man and his miniature clones. As that was happening Tora opened his gourd revealing sake and taking a swig spewed it out and set it on fire aiming at Kimimaro. Kimimaro dodged them and avoided the flames and charged him. Tora swung at him with his gourd and he blocked it with his swords and kicked him in the chest knocking him off the building. The heavy ninja got up and snuck inside a store and got his gourd ready. Ah, a perfect place for an ambush, he'll never know what hit him. He said preparing to incinerate him when he emerged. Unknown to him however the roof from above suddenly gave way and when he turned and saw it his eyes widened as Kimimaro dropped through the roof and producing a cannibal club shattered his gourd and struck him knocking him through the wall crashing outside. Hold on hold on. Please, please don't kill me. The man pleaded with as Kimimaro walked towards him preparing to finish him. You're strong but you can't beat Lord Raiga and Orochimaru, so why not rejoin him while you can? He said and Kimimaro stopped short and appeared to offer his hand to help him up. Ah, excellent I see you want to live. It's the smart thing to do. Tora went to take his hand when Kimimaro's went past his and near his head. Hey. He shouted in surprise when Kimimaro swow out a bone sword impaling him through his brain him. Sensing his death the leader of the group stood up. So it seems it's my turn, Tora you weakling. Yossi said and leapt up and dove into the ground. Naruto threw a giant shuriken at Mura and avoided his copy's attacks. Suddenly he felt something grab his leg and saw one of them had snuck around and grasped his leg and sunk his teeth into his flesh. The creatures latched onto him as well and began glowing sapping him of his chakra and energy. One clung to his face as they immobilized him. Now you die. Mura shouted and leapt over him looking to kill him. Naruto's fist slammed into his stomach suddenly and with another blow knocked him high up into the air. Activating Kyuubi's power a red aura surrounded him and burned and incinerated the copies around him destroying them. He then looked up and saw that Mura was falling down towards him. Mura continued to fall down and Naruto raised his fist in the air and he landed on it breaking his back him on contact. Naruto tossed his limp lifeless body aside. Anyone else want to fight? He asked the other sound nins and Kurosuke members who turned and fled not wanting any part of him. Finally. Naruto said having dealt with them. Suddenly before he could move sand suddenly formed around him and trapped him as he was unable to move. He looked and saw Gara having reappeared, virtually unharmed as cracks was on his body as he used his sand as armor to protect him from it and using his sand was immobilizing him. Naruto struggled but was unable to break free of it. A dark look was in Gara's eyes as he was trapped. Kimimaro saw what was happening and went to help him when he felt something grab his legs from underneath. He looked and saw that his legs had been grabbed from underneath by a pair of hands emerging from the ground. Hey pal, you should worry about yourself. Yossi said his head emerging from the ground as his special abilities and enhancements enabled him to use his chakra to allow himself to travel and burrow underground. Kimimaro struggled but couldn't get loose from his grip. Yossi then dove underground and went after him chasing after him and causing Kimimaro to avoid his attacks making him unable to help Naruto who was immobilized by the sand. Oh crap. Naruto shouted as Gara tossed him and he went flying through the air and crashed smacking against a building and fell to the ground dazed and unable to move. Yossi dove out of the ground aiming at Kimimaro who dodged and kicked him away he then looked and saw what had happened. In rage he went after Gara who summoned a wave of sand and slammed it into his chest knocking him through a series of trees slamming him through them. Well done, with you on our side we're invincible. Yossi said to him an arrogant smirk on his face. Gara turned his head to look and regard him for the first, and last time as he sent his sand after him. What are you argh?
The sound of a body being crashed was heard as Gara paid no attention to the corpse as he went after Naruto knowing he wasn't dead. Lightning ball. Raiga shouted lashing out sending a ball of electricity at Kakashi who countered it with a fireball and the two attacks slammed into each other cancelling one another. Not bad, I guess the leaf can produce a fighter worthy of the hidden mist swordsman. Raiga said to him with a smirk. Kakashi dodged his attacks as electricity channeled through his Kiba blades, in a way he was more dangerous than Zabuza was back at wave as while Zabuza's sword would kill anything in its path with one blow, his pike swords only needed to touch him to electrocute. Plus any attempts with an ambush was nullified cause of that kid he had on his back who had the ability to detect threats with his eyes. Kill him, Raiga ordered and his men appeared and attacked Kakashi as they formed a tower and began spinning using the black tornado to tear him to shreds. Kakashi dodged and suddenly produced five clones as well which formed a tower of their own. Not a bad move, mind if I borrow? He asked with a smirk seated on top and each had kanai in their hands. Black tornado. He shouted and the tower spun and attacked the Kurosuki members knocking them off and one by one to the ground. Raiga snarled at him and channeled lighting. Rock wave. He shouted and fired a bolt at a building destroying part of it looking to bury Kakashi who dodged it. Raiga took that moment to leap at him and dissected him in half. He let out a laugh of mad true imp when Kakashi suddenly turned to water. What, Mizabushin? He said and saw that he was surrounded on all sides by mutal Kakashis. Ranmaru's which one's the real one? He ordered the boy who activated his eyes. Right here. The real hot of K Kakashi and lunged at him who dodged it. The rest of the copies attacked as well looking to overwhelm him. The swordsman roared in fury and electricity surrounded him forming a barrier and two of the copies turned to water trying to break through it. He sent lightning in all directions hitting and destroying the copies but Kakashi only continued making more of them as more and more water appeared. Idiot. I'll destroy you all at once. He shouted preparing to unleash a devastating attack which would wipe them all out. I wouldn't do that if I was you, unless you wanna get shocked. Kakashi said to him smirking under his mask as they both stood in ankle deep water having been created from the clones. The swordsman's eyes widened seeing it as he realized he had been duped into destroying so many that his next attack would harm him as well. Can you beat me without using your lightning? Kakashi asked him. I don't need that to behead you. Raiga shouted and charged him. Naruto shook his head in a daze slowly getting his bearings trying to recover from the force of the impact he had sustained from getting thrown. You. I'll finally have my revenge. A voice shouted suddenly at him. You. Naruto shouted seeing Mizuki, appearing a bit ragged in front of him. The man who had tricked and deceived him months ago when he first became a genin. It was also because of him that he managed to first activate Shikatsumyaku and he had skewered him in rage for what he had said to him. The traitor had taken that opportune moment during the chaos to escape from his cell and made his way into Konoha and try and sneak out. Now I'll kill you for what you did to me you freak. Mizuki shouted seeing an opportune moment to have his revenge on him. He produced a potion that Orochimaru had given him based off of the ingredients listed on a tattoo he had and when it was consumed he would have strength to defeat 20 ninja so he was told. He drank it and swallowed it all in one gulp and his body suddenly transformed into a tiger crossover with a man. He let out a roar at Naruto who slowly got to his feet and prepared to fight him. I'll tear you to pieces. Before he could try and attack him, sand suddenly wrapped around his head. Naruto winced when he heard a crashing sound imagining that his skull had just been crushed, Mizuki's corpse was thrown away into the distance and Naruto saw Gara standing before him. Firing a pillar of sand at him. Naruto nearly dodged it in the nick of time as that would have impaled him, Gara fired more pillars at him and Naruto dodged evading his attacks. Sand tail, Gara said preparing a jutsu channeling the sand from his gourd he created a giant stinger like that of a scorpion behind him and hardened it. Making motions with one of his hands, he stabbed at Naruto who dodged it as fast as he could just missing being impaled by it. The tail lunged at him and he moved out of the way and it hit a building behind him and got stuck. Gara snarled in anger trying to break free. Gotta think of something fast before, he gets free. If only I can distract him. Naruto said seeing him trying to get loose, he then looked up and saw that the sun's brightness. Wait, that's it. He shouted and went for the last jutsu that Aruka had taught him. 
Gara managed to get the tail out of the building and was prepared to kill Naruto with it, however Naruto quickly did hand symbols and brought his hands to the side of his face. Sun Flare no Jutsu. He shouted activating it and a bright light engulfed the area where they was at. Gara let out a scream as the brightness consumed his eyes. The light stopped as fast as it had appeared. Gara was shown clutching at his face seemingly in pain from it as he had not expected it. Naruto took that opportunity and drawing out a sword lunged at him. The sand from before blocked it but Gara took a swing at him which he dodged easily as Gara was blinded and unused to not seeing. Kimamaro having recovered dashed to the battlefield and fired a blade from his elbow at him, aiming to take his head off. Kimamaro's blade swout towards Gara and his sand managed to form and stop it, however the force of it was strong enough and part of it burst through and nicked Gara across the back of his neck. Sand went to get him but Kimamaro dodged it and reappeared next to his cousin. Gara, his eyesight returned to normal prepared to attack them when he suddenly felt something he hadn't felt before. What? What is this? Gara thought as he felt something trickling down his neck. The feeling of it unlike anything he had ever felt on him before. He brought a hand up to it and felt a liquid smearing across his hand. He brought his hand to his face and his eyes widened and twitched wildly when he saw what it was on it. Blood, his blood, his own blood. Garas trembled as he stared at the red liquid in his hand and slowly his entire body started shaking as he snapped a vicious look, one that promised agonizing pain and death towards Kimamaro and Naruto. Oh, oh, I'll kill you. He shouted snarling in rage and sand formed around him pouring out of his gourd as he drawed on the power of Shukaku unleashing it to its full extent. Naruto and Kimamaro watched on as they saw the sand engulf him and his body start to expand growing bigger and bigger with every ping second and towering over them as his hands became. The sand hardened around his body as it disappeared and in place of the boy was a gigantic tanuki that stood over them and let out a roar that could be heard all around. What the do you call that? Naruto shouted and the beast snarling at them with dark pupils raised its foot up attempting to squash them. Move. Naruto shouted and they leapt in the nick of time. The beast spun around deceptively quick and lashed its tail out at them smashing through buildings with ease. It then took in a deep breath and fired a gigantic ball of sand at them which missed and headed it into the nearby forest and destroyed part of it. This isn't good, he'll destroy everything just to get at us. Naruto said looking on unable to figure out a way to be able to take this guy down. He heard a cough suddenly and looked at Kimamaro who covered his mouth and clutched his chest. He's still sick isn't he? He shouldn't have been forced to go through all this. He thought to himself and looked back at the monstrosity before them. There is only one way I can think of, that could stop him. Kimamaro said suddenly and stepped forward. Though I'm afraid that doing so may cost me my life. He said as he stared at the sight before him, knowing full well that there may be no other choice. The disease was still in his body, the strain of using it would most likely prove fatal to him if he did use it, yet he saw no other way to be able to take this berserking monstrosity down. His cousin looked at him confused not understanding. Naruto, he said and looked back at him and smiled. I thank you for all you've done for me. He said and reached towards his shirt and pulled it down. Naruto looked on and suddenly saw the marking on his chest. It was similar to Sasuke's own but in a different shape. Kimamaro then activated the cursed seal of earth and markings started to appear on his body flowing up towards his head and face. Using that which had been bestowed upon him from Orochimaru years ago he stood up straight with no sign of the illness in him as Naruto felt a dark power, similar to the one Sasuke had before emerge from him. With a cry he leapt off the roof and towards Shukaku at a fast speed. The beast seeing him roared and went to swat him but he evaded it and disappearing in a blur reappeared above him and produced two claymore-sized blades and dove down onto its arm piercing through it. Shukaku roared in surprise and pain and lashed at him who dodged and ran up the arm slashing at it with the swords in hand. At the bottom of his feet small spikes also appeared enabling him to keep on it and not fall off as he ran. Sand emerged from Shukaku's arm and went to engulf him and he spun and slashed and destroyed it as he fought on. He leapt backwards and Shukaku followed him deeper into the forest taking the beast away from Konoha so no innocent people would get caught in the attack. I gotta do something. Naruto said and chased after them. A pair of sound nins appeared in his way but Naruto easily cut them down as he ran after them. Don't interfere Naruto. This is his fight. Kayubi shouted in his head but he ignored the fox. He couldn't let him fight him alone, no way was he going to let him fight him without any help. 
It's time to finish this. Kakashi said to Raiga Kurosuki the two having battled. We're not done yet. Raiga shouted at him. Then you wouldn't mind facing all of us at once now would you? Asuma Serutobi said and with him were other Jonans surprising Raiga. You're a bit outmatched here. Kakashi told him and Raiga noticed the odds were now against him as he was being cornered by Anbu and other leaf ninja. Rinmara looked on fear in his eyes. Raiga saw that his men were retreating and despite his love of battle he wasn't suicidal. I grow bored of this. Next time you won't get so lucky. He shouted and fired a bolt of lightning at him who dodged it easily and turned and fled. Kakashi didn't do anything to pursue as he watched them go as many it seemed like were being beaten back and retreating. He looked and saw Sakura and Sasuke and he wondered where Naruto was at. Kimamaro leapt up directly at the demon's face and did hand symbols and fired multiple bones and spikes from his chest at him. Shukaku roared and blew out wind deflecting them and the demon bellowed and blew out a gust of wind slamming into Kimamaro the force of it knocking him through trees and slamming into a large one sticking to it. Its eyes narrowing Shukaku lashed it with a claw ready to tear him to pieces. Kimamaro recovered at the last instant and leapt away. Focusing his chakra he then turned and fired several eight-foot-long spikes out of his back at him who blocked the attack. I'll crush you. Gara, no Shukaku shouted at him and lashed at him. Kimamaro dodged it avoiding the attack. I'll slaughter you. Shukaku roared and took in a deep breath and fired a gust of air at him knocking down trees looking to crush him underneath them. Shikao then raised its foot and slammed into the ground creating a minor earthquake making Kimamaro lose his footing from the force of it. D-I-E-E-E-E-E. He shouted and lashed at him with his claws. Kimamaro narrowly dodged the attacks as it cut through anything in its path. He fired bones at him which had no effect Kimamaro followed it up by pulling a large cannibal out of his leg and dodging his claws slammed it onto its hand. Shukaku roared in pain when San suddenly grasped Kimamaro's ankles and he found himself unable to move. Quote exclamation mark quote. He shouted as he tried to break free of the iron-like grip. Shukaku bellowed and brought his other claw up above and slammed it down onto him crushing him. Naruto gasped in horror as he was too late. Kimamaro, I'll kill you gaara. Naruto shouted as his eyes turned a murderous red. Before he could do anything suddenly Shukaku let out a howl and it sounded like he was in pain. He removed his claw and Naruto saw to his shock Kimamaro but something had happened to him. His skin had changed color and his eyes had turned darker and pupils had become yellow. A tail like a lizard he now possessed as he was shirtless and he had four bone-like swords sticking out of his back. In each hand he had a drill and was stabbing them into his claw. What in the world? Naruto said looking on at what he saw as Kimamaro had activated his cursed seal level 2 form. His last resort move that he hadn't undergone the transformation to try and beat him. Die. Kimamaro shouted in a more vicious tone. He lunged up at Shukaku and fired multiple bone swords out of his chest at him hitting him in the chest area. Shukaku roared and lashed at him but Kimamaro was too fast for him. Dance of the falling petals. Kimamaro shouted and appeared above him and began spinning and fired hundreds of spikes all at once at him. The attacks by themselves would have called anyone but due to his thick hide, they served as a minor injury to the tailed beast who lashed with his tail and deflected them. Tear you apart. Reaching into his back he pulled out his spine which took the shape of a chain. When he lunged at him he swung the chain and it snared around his arm. Kimamaro then wrapped the chain around his arm so it couldn't move and prepared to do a move to finish him off. But before he could clutch at his chest and cried out in pain. No, not now. He shouted as he felt his sickness coming back. Usage of the cursed seal had brought the dormant disease back to him and he felt himself getting weaker. He began coughing and spat up blood as the transformation was being reversed. He changed back and fell to his knees unable to move. Shukaku seeing this prepared to kill him when Naruto appeared right in front of him. Your fight is with me Gara. Naruto shouted. Kuchio's no jutsu. He shouted and summoned a gigantic toad large enough to combat him in his Shukaku form. Naruto stood on top of Gamabunta's head as he stared at his enemy across from him. Give me a light young one. Gamabunta shouted and Naruto threw an explosive tag into his mouth. The giant toad swow out a large fireball hitting Shukaku in the chest. The tailed beast roared in pain and fired a gust of wind at him. Naruto held onto Gamabunta who stood his ground. Shukaku roared and took a deep breath and fired balls of concentrated air at him. Gamabunta leapt out of the way of it and rammed him. 
Shukaku lashed at him but he fired his out and blocked it as the two were at a stalemate. There's gotta be a way to beat this guy but how? Naruto said to himself as Shukaku fired gusts of sand at him looking to bury him. Gamabunta fired out mucus which burned him. There's a way to beat him but you have to use my power. Kayubi shouted in his mind. Naruto was reluctant to use it but saw no other choice. He drawed upon his power and prepared to attack. Henshin no Jutsu. Naruto shouted and he suddenly transformed into a gigantic fox as he surged with Kyuubi's power and slammed into Shukaku and bit him on the chest. The attack weakened it significantly as it fell backwards. Naruto returned to his regular form and landed on Gamabunta. He's still not down. Naruto said in disbelief as it slowly staggered upwards. Naruto then realized and saw something. It was Gara. Gara's body was sticking out of the head area. And it looked like he was asleep. There. Aim there and kill him. Kayubi shouted at him. I hope this works. He muttered and got a kanai out and threw it aiming for his body. Naruto's aim was a bit off but the kanai scratched him in the shoulder and Gara jilted awake feeling it. Shukaku sensing it let out a roar and began to fade away sealing back inside him. Gara, as he awoke used his sand to levitate in the air as he looked on. Both boys looked and saw each other and there was only one thing left to do now to determine who would win. Naruto leapt off Gamabunta sending him away aiming for Gara. Naruto and Gara lunged at each other and each one threw a fist putting all their remaining strength into it. Gara missed. Naruto didn't. His fist slammed into Gara's face knocking him down and he fell to the ground. Naruto slowly started to fall as well as he had no energy left, mentally and physically exhausted from all that had happened. He didn't fell his body hit the ground as he stared up at the sky. This has gone long enough. Jiraiya shouted reaching the place where the sound 4 was stationed. Who the is this fool? Sakin shouted. Tuyuya didn't say anything as he glared at them all. You four are responsible for this barrier, I shall break it. Jiraiya vowed as he walked towards the barrier that prevented Serutobi from getting any aid. That fool. Jirobo sneered at him. No one can break this jutsu, he'll wind up being burned to ash. Jiraiya concentrated and did a long series of hand symbols and with a cry slammed his palm against the force field. For a moment nothing happened but then suddenly cracks appeared in it. To the sound for surprise and shock Jiraiya broke the jutsu that had been placed around the building, shocking them as no one had ever done that before. Kill him. Sakin shouted and they activated their cursed seals and attempted to attack him. Kitamaru fired his bow and arrows which Jiraiya dodged. Sakin and Ukin charged him and he dodged their combined attacks and knocked them into the spider ninja. Tuyuya played a tune on her flute and Jiraiya found his arms starting to melt. However he ignored the burning pain and brought his hands up and formed a seal breaking her genjutsu. Jirobo reached down and pulled out a large piece of the roof and chucked it at him. Jiraiya saw it coming and did a series of hand symbols. Substitution target jutsu. He shouted performing it and a poof of smoke appeared and he disappeared and in his place was Tuyuya the two having switched places. Unable to comprehend what was going on and react in time she was hit by it and knocked down and rolled off the roof landing on the ground in a crumpled heap. Our retreat. Sakin shouted seeing they were no match for him. What about Tuyuya? Kitamaru asked as he saw that she was incapacitated. Forget her. She's nothing but dead weight. Sakin responded and the rest fled. Jiraiya didn't pursue as he watched them go. He turned and looked up towards the top of it where Orochimaru and Serutobi was battling, he had to get there before it was too late. The blonde laying on the ground felt exhausted over all that had happened today, right now he would give everything he had for a bowl of ramen. Slowly he sat up and got to his feet when he heard a sound suddenly. He looked and Naruto saw Gara nearby leaning against a building and he was heavily panting his head down and clutched at his chest as he was very weak after all that had happened as he leaned on it to keep him from falling down. Naruto watched him and slowly started to walk over to him. The red-haired boy lifted his head and green stared into blue. Go ahead kill me, put me out of this miserable world. Gara said to him. Naruto looked at him and saw instead of a raging snarling demon, a pitiful child. I know what's it like Gara. I know what it's like to have nobody, to deal with hatred almost every day of your life. You're a Jinchurki, so am I. Naruto said to him surprising him. I've grown up with looks of hatred, but the world isn't as bad as you think it is. There are people out there who'll care for you even if they don't show it. People who love you and will do anything they can to help you. 
What utter nonsense, people only seek to hurt you and don't care that, that's not true. Naruto shouted at him surprising him. Your family cares for you. Even if it doesn't appear they do, they still care for you. You are too blinded by your anger and rage to see it. Your brother and sister are concerned about you even if they are afraid. You're lying. Gara snarled at him. If I am then who's that over there? Naruto asked and pointed behind him and Gara turned his head and saw to his surprise Konkuro and Tamari. His brother and sister watched on and they had concern in their eyes which surprised him. Were they, actually concerned about him? Was the fear he thought they always had actually worry and concern? Sometimes you need to look at the GL half full for a change. Naruto said to him and his brother and sister stepped forward each ready to fight and defend him it seemed like. Tamari and Konkuro got ready to fight Naruto when Gara, after several long seconds spoke up. Enough, he said surprising them and the tone in his voice shocked them. I'm done fighting. Tamari, Konkuro. He said and each looked at him and back at each other as this was the first time he talked to them without anger or malice in his voice. Let's go home. He said and walked away. Naruto smiled as he watched them go. The siblings were confused but each followed after him wondering what had happened. Maybe there's hope for him yet, like there was hope for me. He said as he looked and saw Kimamaro walking towards him. He saw Kakashi and the others looking on as the battle was nearly over. Orochimaru staggered backwards as his arms had changed to a lifeless purple color. He looked in horror at what had happened to them as he couldn't move them as they hung helplessly. What have you done? He shouted at Sarutobi who had a blade in him. My arms, you've sealed them. He said to him as he had summoned Shinigami to dispel his Edo Tensai on the resurrected cages and had then used it on him. Orochimaru had struck him with his Kusanagi blade before he would be killed by the death god but his arms were immobile as he couldn't move them. Sarutobi. A voice shouted and they saw Jiraiya making his way up. You'll pay for this, I promise you will pay. Orochimaru snarled and leapt down. Sarutobi brought a hand to the wound he had. So it appears this is the end of my journey. He said to himself as he slowly sat down. Naruto, Kimamaro, the rest is up to you. Jiraiya didn't pursue Orochimaru as he saw the wounded man and knew he had to help him. Orochimaru and the sound forces were in retreat fleeing the area and Suna was fleeing as well. Raiga and the Kurosuki members were retreating as well. Kakashi looked on at the destruction that had been wrought this day. W wait, Tuyuya said stretching out an arm seeing them leave. Her master hadn't even spared her a glance, not even caring if she was still alive or not. Please don't leave me, she begged as she watched them go helplessly. A group of Anbu appeared suddenly with their blades aimed at her. Bind her, the leader of the group ordered and they roughly stood her up and did so taking her prisoner. She didn't struggle against it as there was none of the fire or fury in her eyes before after she had watched them leave and not even spare her a glance. Naruto watched them flee and looked at Kimamaro who was back to his normal state and clutching at his chest as he coughed in pain. The white-haired ninja continued to cough and hack and fell to his knees. Naruto looked on in alarm at what was happening as using the cursed seal had drastically allowed the disease to overtake him, he looked at him and saw how pale he was becoming. Naruto, Kakashi said to him. Let's get him to a hospital, he needs to be looked at. He told him and Naruto nodded and each took an arm and carried Kimamaro hoping to aid him. Sarutobi, tears welled up in Jiraiya's eyes as he held the old man in his arms. The old man struggled to take deep breaths and looked up at his student. Hang in there, you're going to be alright, I promise just hang on. Medics are on their way just hold out a little longer. It's too late my student, Sarutobi said but smiled. This is a path I was prepared to walk, death is something we all must undertake. I now go to join my father and my wife, as well as sit beside my ancestors and the past Hokages. No, Jiraiya said as tears fell out his eyes. Promise me, promise me this Jiraiya, Sarutobi said gasping for breath. Help Naruto, and help Kimamaro, help them rebuild the Uzumaki and Kaguya clans. Help Naruto reach his dream of becoming Hokage. Jiraiya nodded his head. Yes, yes I will. But you gotta stay with me and see it happen. Don't go sensei please don't go. You have to live to see the kid become Hokage. Sarutobi smiled weakly at him. That sounds like something I would like to see, maybe I will, when I wake up from my nap. He said and his eyes closed and his hand fell to the floor. Sarutobi. Sarutobi. Chapter 27.
The entire village of Konoha looked on at the shrine and gravesite, looks of sadness on their faces is set in the center of it was a picture of Hirazan Serutobi, the Sandame of Konoha who had pet away in the attack. Naruto Uzumaki, dressed in black like everyone else and standing next to his team looked on as many people wept and cried over the loss of the beloved man who was like a grandfather to so many people. He watched and looked on as Konohamaru cried while Asuma put a hand on his shoulder to comfort him despite the stone face expression he too was broken hearted over what had happened. Many of them held candles and walked over to the grave and sat them down paying their final tribute to the man who had given his life to the village he loved. Sakura was next to him standing between him and Sasuke and she was sobbing and he looked at her as tears flowed down her face. Reaching over he took her hand in his to comfort her. To his surprise she didn't reject it. He looked at her and the others and then back at the grave. Serutobi had given his life to stop Orochimaru, his treacherous student who had attacked Konoha two days ago. It was a period of mourning for not only his death but all the others who died as well in the attack. He felt a hand on his shoulder and he looked up at Aruka who looked down at him with a sad expression in his eyes. Naruto looked around at the people of Konoha. Guy, Kuranai, the Rookie Nine, even the Anbu he could tell had sorrowful expressions on their faces hidden beneath their masks. It's alright to feel sad Naruto, you don't have to wear a mask here. Kakashi said behind him. This is what Sarutobi would have done, his love for Konoha and desire to protect it and its people was as great as the strength he had. He would have given his life a hundred times in order to protect Konoha and the people he loved. Old man, he said sadly and bowed his head. Hard to believe he was gone, the first person who inspired him to become a ninja and vow to become Hokage. He remembered the happy memories he had with him, eating at Ikirakus as a kid, catching him reading those dirty books when he was supposed to be doing paperwork, the smile he gave him after beating Neji, full of pride and happy he had won. Those and other memories appeared through his mind as the realization of the man he had loved as grandfather was gone now. Anger crossed his eyes as he recalled the one responsible for all this, the one known as Orochimaru the Snake Sani. And to make things worse, he had once been the Sandime's prized apprentice and student, how could he do such a thing to the man who trained him? Stabbing him in the back and betraying the village. He thought of his cousin the ill Kimimaro Kaguya who was hospitalized and in bad shape it looked like. He might not make it out alive the way it sounded. Naruto looked on as others stepped forward and paid their respects to him and departed. He watched on and gave Sakura's hand another comforting squeeze as he saw Konohamaru and Asuma walk forward and paid their respects to Sarutobi. He saw Ino and her family lay a bouquet of flowers on it and Choji and his parents laid a plate of his favorite meal on the shrine, they and others paid their last respects to him. Come on, Kakashi said to Team 7 and they stepped forward and looked at the shrine. The group bowed their head paying tribute to the man. After a while people began heading home but Naruto still stayed looking on at it. Taking a deep breath he walked toward the grave and stopped as he looked at the picture of Serutobi staring into his eyes. Serutobi, he said quietly. Thanks, thank you for everything you did to me. If it hadn't been for you, I never would have even thought about my dream. He said and tears started to well up in his eyes but they soon hardened in determination. I promise you, I promise you that I will make you proud. I will become Hokage. I'll make sure that everything you did for Konoha was not in vain, I'm going to avenge your death. I'll become a Hokage that you, the first, the second, and the fourth will be proud of. He vowed. Meanwhile, the redhead had been dormant and quiet, rarely speaking or saying anything. To Yuya of the North Gate and one of the sound four of Odogakur sat in her cell a blank expression on her face. Her eyes that once held fire in them had nothing in them, not of the fire or anger she possessed before ever since her capture during the failed attack. Her chakra was sealed preventing her from able to do anything, every six hours two men would come in and force her to take a pill that would sap her of chakra preventing her from using it or trying to escape. Her master had abandoned her, the others hadn't even spared her a glance or tried to help her when she got injured and unable to move. They had retreated and left her for dead and she had been captured and imprisoned thrown in a dark cell with little light in it and given sparse amounts of food and water. She had struggled and yelled and screamed cursing as loud as possible the first couple of hours but soon the realization sunk in on her that she was captured and her master had left her behind without a second glance. All she had done for him and he had left her behind. 
She wished her flute hadn't been taken away, at least then she could play music to brighten her mood and make her forget for a moment at least what had happened to her. The door to her cell opened to her surprise as six hours hadn't ped it and an Anbu walked in and stomped towards her and grabbed her by the arm. I'm going to enjoy making you feel the same pain and agony all of us have felt thanks to you. The Anbu said as he threw to Yuya to the floor. The redhead tried to stand but was kicked in the ribs causing her to cry out. I'll make you squeal like a pig. He vowed to her smacking her. Don't bother crying out no one's going to hear you or come to your aid even if they did. He said to her as he pinned her down. His hands started to reach for her shirt and she cried out and slapped at him trying to stop him. Quiet you whore. He shouted smacking her again. You deserve what I'm going to do to you. He said and went to undress her. However before he could a Sinbon struck him in the neck and his eyes rolled up into the back of his head and he fell to the ground unconscious. Tiyuya lifted her head and looked and saw who had done it. You, she said as standing in the doorway was the toad Sanin Jiraiya who walked over. Jiraiya looked down and spat at the unconscious body disgust in his eyes that he would try and do such a thing. She may be an enemy ninja but was something he would never tolerate. He was taught better than that as the unconscious Anbu was dragged off by others as he stayed alone with her in the cell. Good thing I left Sarutobi's funeral early. He said and her eyes widened and she looked downtrodden. Many people are calling for your execution you know. Want to see you hanged in broad daylight in front of the entire village. Jiraiya said to her. But I can help you out, if you can give us information about Orochimaru and help us out maybe I can have you placed on parole. He informed her who didn't respond. Jiraiya looked at her and stared into her brown eyes, eyes that looked lost and confused. She hadn't expected for Orochimaru to discard her like yesterday's trash. In a way she too was another victim of his, having that accursed marking on her neck that he had suppressed. I advise you to think about my offer, here. He said and reached into his outfit and pulled out her flute. Figured you might want that back. I'll talk to you again two days from now, for your sake I hope you consider it. He said to her as she took it from him. He exited her cell and started to walk down the hallway when he stopped and listened hearing the sound of a flute being played. Meanwhile, Orochimaru was furious and he could not recall a time he had ever been so mad. Not only did his attack to destroy Konoha had failed, Kimamaro had betrayed him siding with that wretched Uzumaki boy, and to make things worse that old man had sealed his arms before he died preventing him from using them or any jutsu. A loud cry of anger and pain escaped him that could be heard all throughout the compound of the base he was at. Kabuto entered the room carrying fresh bandages to apply to his arms. The medic paled seeing how bloody they were as he had just put them on an hour ago. Him, that man. He snarled in fury as Kabuto applied the bandages. Orochimaru Sama what are we to do? Not only did the attack fail but we lost Kimamaro as well when he defected and Tuyuya was captured. Shut up. I'm thinking. He hissed at him. First Haku took away his planned sacrifices, then Kimamaro betrayed him and to top it all off his arms had been sealed thanks to Serutobi. Things had not gone the way he had envisioned. Tsunade Haim, he said suddenly after a few minutes as it dawned upon him. I've got to find Tsunade. He said and stood up surprising Kabuto. Sir. She's the only one who could possibly reverse what that wretched man did to me. Orochimaru explained to him. The slug Sanin and legendary healer, my former teammate along with Jiraiya. I've got to find her and make her fix my arms. He said with a hiss. My lord, no one knows where Tsunade has been, it's been years since she's been spotted. Kabuto said to her but was ignored. Yes, she could repair the damage done to them. But I must find her fast, he said and his eyes narrowed in anger. No doubt Kimamaro is at death's door due to using his cursed seal in the battle against the Suna Jinchurki and has days if not hours left, if I know that boy that is his cousin and if he's anything like Jiraiya, he'll do anything he can to try and cure him. He said thinking of Naruto who would no doubt once he had heard of her set out to find her. Come Kabuto we must go at once. He said preparing to leave. Now. But sir you are in no condition to, Kabuto's protest was cut off when Orochimaru turned his head around and extended his which turned into a snake and was just inches away from sinking its fangs into his neck. I will be the judge of that. Orochimaru said and his turned back to normal and went back inside his mouth. Let's go, inform the Sakan, Raiga, and the others. We go now, he said as he exited the room. Yes Orochimaru-sama. The next day in Konoha, what? 
Naruto said in surprise as he stood in front of Kakashi and others in a room. You have been selected to become Chunin Naruto. Kakashi said to him. What? But why? The exams were cancelled after the attack. Naruto said not understanding what was going on. True, but from what was seen you were deemed the most impressive out of all the participants, we all voted and you narrowly beat Shikamaru Nara to be selected Chunin. Sum Inazuka said although she seemed reluctant to speak considering the last time he meet them and called them out. The purpose of the exams and the tournament is to select the one who uses the best tactics, the one who wins doesn't always become the chosen one to be made Chunin. Your skill and abilities were deemed the most impressive as no one expected you to be able to withstand Neji's Jukan attacks and be able to defeat him. Hiyashi said to him, part of him disappointed that Naruto had won as it had ruined his plan to get him in an arranged marriage with one of the branch females. You have earned this Naruto. Take it and wear it with pride. Kakashi said and handed the green vest to him. Naruto took the green vest in his hands and ran his fingers over the fabric as he looked at it, this was what he wanted. To become Chunin and achieve his first step in fulfilling his dream. Before he had been willing to give everything for this opportunity. And it come as a big surprise to all onlookers when he handed the vest back to Hiyashi, I'm sorry but I can't accept it, not right now. Naruto said surprising them as he rejected it handing it back to him. Right now, I've got too much on my mind to deal with the tasks of being Chunin right now. There's too much going on for me to accept it, being awarded and made a chunin is a big responsibility and a huge honor but right now I'm not ready for it. Give it to Shikamaru, he'd make a fine chunin. He said to them. Naruto, Kakashi said looking on at him. Are you sure? You realize you'll have to retake the chunin exams again and who knows when or where it will be held. Hiyashi asked him honestly surprised along with many others not expecting him to decline it. Yeah, I'm sure. I've got a lot going on right now that I need to focus on and I'm afraid that I'd neglect my duties as a chunin if I was made one with all that's happening. Naruto said to them all. When the next time it is held, I'll prove that I am worthy of becoming one and wearing it. Very well then, we respect your decision Naruto Uzumaki. Shikamaru Nara shall be informed he was made chunin soon enough. Naruto left the building and looked at the surroundings at the damage that had been done due to the attack. Repairs were being made but it would take time for Konoha to fully heal over what had happened. He looked around at the buildings that had been damaged and destroyed and the lives last and his gaze stopped at the hospital where Kimimaro was at. The white-haired boy who had defected to the leap and helped him in defeating Gara was there, strapped to numerous machines and on life support and the doctors weren't giving him much longer to live. There had to be a way to save him, his blood that had healed him before wouldn't do the trick as the disease was too strong for it to fully heal him. He thought of Tuyuya and anger entered his heart at the fact she had betrayed them it seemed like, she was locked up and he hadn't gone to see her but he was hurt over what she did. Having really been a ninja under Orochimaru, he had started to care for the girl thinking of her as a friend during that month period of training and she had gone and aided him. Naruto, a voice said and he looked and saw Sakura and with her was many others including Hinata, Shikamaru, Ino, Shino, Tenten, and others. Sasuke he could see in the back looking on as well. Shikamaru, congrats. You're being made Chunin. He said surprising the lazy boy. They decided you did the best out of everyone. Troublesome, figured they would have picked you instead. He replied. Why you've G gone through a l lot Naruto. Hanada said twiddling her fingers not looking up at him. I'll be fine, I've just got a lot on my mind as of late. Your cousin. Tenten asked looking at him remembering how she fought the white-haired ninja who defeated her easily as it was revealed Kimimaro and Naruto were related. Yeah, that's part of it. I'll talk to you all later. He said and turned and started to leave. Naruto, Sakura called out to him. Remember we're here for you if you ever need help. She said to the blonde. Naruto looked back at them and nodded and went on his own. Elsewhere, Yahir. I heard someone tried to attack Konoha during the exams recently. I heard the Sandame died from his wounds. That's just gossip, you shouldn't believe everything you hear. A group of men were talking to one another in the bazaar of the medium-sized city located in Fire Country. The group chatted amongst themselves exchanging rumors and stories they had heard. As they talked they were unaware that a person was listening into their talk with interest. Listening in, the feminine appearing boy listened to their talk. So he went and pulled it off anyway, sounds like he failed though. Good. He said as he heard them talk about what had happened. 
his disgust at the man's tactics and methods leaving him to abandon him and his followers and thwarting his plans by taking away the three he had planned on using. I hear one kid, some blonde boy beat a Hyuga prodigy who was favored, they say he could pull out his bones and use them as weapons. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of, you're just making that up. The boy smiled guessing the name of the boy who had done it pleased he was doing well. He walked through the bazaar of the city and soon came to the inn he and the others were staying at while they were here. He entered the building ignoring and being ignored by the patrons as he ascended up the stairs and came to a door and knocked fast two times and then slowly three more times and felt the door was unlocked. He opened it and stepped in looking at the three former sound nins. Haku. Kintsuchi said to him with her Zaku Abumi and Dosu Kinyuta the four having fled Konoha the night before Orochimaru had attacked. Evading their fate as sacrifices used for Edo Tensai. We've been hired for a job. He said to them. At Konoha, Naruto was by himself staring down into the water of the lake looking into the clear blue water as he saw the fish swim in it without a care in the world. He envied them at the moment, they didn't have anything to care about happening to them with their simple lives. His life with all that had happened was anything but simple. Suddenly he felt two presences behind him and the hairs on the back of his neck stood up as he sensed danger. Faintly he heard the sound of footsteps on the GR and they soon stopped as they got closer. For several long minutes he stood there not moving as his back was to whoever was behind him. Finally he slowly turned around and looked at who was standing before him. Two men, each one wearing a black cloak with red clouds on it. Each wore a traditional hat to cover their head and both men had their nails painted and wore a ring on one of their fingers with a symbol on it. The first one it seemed had blue skin and cold cruel eyes with black spiky hair underneath his hat and a grin on his face revealing several sharp teeth. Strapped to his back was a sword covered up. Across his forehead he wore a hit I ate with the mist symbol with a cut across the middle of it. A deep throaty chuckle escaped him as he looked at Naruto who turned his attention to the other one. The other one was quiet not saying anything but as Naruto looked at him and stared at him seeing his hit I ate he wore that had the leaf symbol and a slash across the middle of it. Naruto looked at him and saw his eyes recognizing them instantly and what they stood for. The Sharingan, so, your Itachi Uchiha. The one who murdered his best friend for power and wiped out all his family on a whim. Naruto said looking at the taller ninja before him who stared at him silently. Missing nins don't really belong here, there must be something important you want coming to a place that wants you dead. Naruto said casually looking at Itachi. His companion let out another chuckle in amusement his grin growing. You, Itachi finally said pointing a finger at him. I want you Naruto Uzumaki, or to be more precise. I want the Kyubi that resides in you. He said to him. Naruto looked at him and narrowed his eyes. Itachi, should I cut off his legs to keep him from running? The shark man asked him starting to reach towards his sword. Easy Kisame, there is no need to resort to your methods just yet. Itachi replied calmly. Naruto glared at the two. Naruto. A pair of voices cried out and Naruto turned his head and saw Asuma, Kurenai, and Might Guy appear running towards him. Get away from him. Might Guy shouted and leapt at Kisame and kicked at him who dodged it getting his sword out but keeping it unraveled. Asuma using his speed had his trench knives in hand and slashed at him using a wind element to send razor cuts which he dodged avoiding the attacks. Not like the other ones, the last ones were left to die by their village when they came to get them. Kisame said in amusement as he blocked Asuma's attack. Guy appeared from behind using his speed and kicked at him knocking his hat off revealing his head and hair. He lashed at him with his sword which was still raveled. Kisame formed hand symbols and fired a giant ball of water at them knocking them down. Guy got up and activated the gates and rushed at Kisame surprising the shark-like ninja who avoided his attack. Guy threw a fist that the friction in the air caught on fire and his hand became engulfed in flame narrowly missing Kisame. Might Guy then leapt over him and appearing behind him grabbed the handle of his sword. To his surprise however, spikes protruded from the hilt almost impaling his hand. Samahata doesn't like it when someone aside from me touches it. Kisame said and swung at Guy but was blocked by Asuma. Now. He shouted and suddenly the member of the seven swordsmen was surrounded and ensnared by vines and sharp branches trapping him. He looked and saw that Kurenai having stayed behind had cast the jutsu on him trapping him holding him in place. However it suddenly broke making him get free and the genjutsu expert found herself trapped in her own jutsu. 
She struggled to get loose but was unable to as her own tactic was being used against her. Itachi was revealed to have used his Sharingan to reverse her attack making it affect her instead of Kisame. Now you die. Kisame shouted and threw his sword at the trapped Jonan looking to kill her. Kurinai braced herself for the attack seeing no way out. Suddenly the branches and vines holding her vanished and Kakashi with his mask down revealing his Sharingan eye grabbed her and pulled her out of the way before it could hit her. Hot up K Kakashi, it's been a while. Itachi said looking on at him who narrowed both his eyes at the two. Before he could say anything a voice yelled out full of fury and rage. Itachi. Sasuke shouted running towards the scene having heard the commotion and seeing his brother for the first time in years. Oh brother, Itachi said to him who was seething with rage. You. Sasuke shouted charging at Itachi murder in his eyes. Fire release. Great fireball. He shouted and fired a large fireball at him from his mouth. The attack hit him dead on and seemingly consumed him but when the smoke cleared Itachi was unharmed. Pitiful, this is a fireball. Itachi said and forming a jutsu fired his own fireball which was twice as large as the one Sasuke had fired. Move. Kakashi shouted and they leapt out of the way as it destroyed all in its path. The Jonin fell to one knee feeling exhausted from having to use the Sharingan to save Kurinai, Sasuke stay back don't do anything. Kakashi shouted at him but to no avail as he charged him again activating the cursed seal as the sounds of loud chirping was heard. Chidori. He shouted and thrusted the attack at him but Itachi dodged it and reappeared behind and jabbed him in the back with a finger sending him crashing through a tree breaking through it. I must admit I was expecting more from you Sasuke, Itachi said to him who slowly struggled to get up. Sasuke got to his feet and turned but was grabbed by the throat Itachi appearing in a blur and his eyes changed activating the Mangekio Sharingan he had. Images swirled through Sasuke's mind as the day he discovered his clan and family dead went through his mind and he cried out in pain and terror at what he was re-experiencing. Itachi dropped him on the ground looking down at him nothing in his eyes a stunned look in the younger Uchiha's eyes. Naruto looked on shock at what he just did and effortlessly defeating Sasuke like it was nothing. Itachi turned his head and looked at him and Naruto gritted his teeth. He suddenly sensed something from behind and he turned but wasn't quick enough to avoid Kisame slamming his sword into his rib cage knocking him to the ground. Naruto got up and getting several bones out threw them at Kisame who deflected them with Samahata. Naruto followed it up with combining two swords into one and charged him and slashed but Kisame dodged it and swung his sword and his sword broke through his bone sword surprising Naruto who narrowly dodged his next attack. Ah, what a pest you are being. Kisame grumbled in irritation, to think the Uzumaki of all clans would be related to those guys and have their Kekai Genkai. He said when Guy and Asuma reappeared aiding Naruto. The two Jonin rushed him and attacked and the Mist Ninja avoided their attacks expertly as they fought. This foe is beyond you Naruto, get out of here. Kakashi said to him. Kisame using a clone knocked Asuma aside and using it trapped Guy in water and was ready to cut off his legs when suddenly a battle cry was heard. The shark man whipped around and looked up and his eyes widened in shock as Kimamaro leapt down at him and slashed at him across the chest with a sword. Kisame howled in pain and stumbled backwards as it cut through his cloak and blood spilled out of it and he reached at his chest. It was a small wound and one that should heal in time but the fact he had cut him infuriated the swordsman. What the? You. He shouted at Kimamaro who was panting heavily struggling to stand on his own two feet. You just made a big mistake my friend. He snarled and slashed at him with Samahata and Kimamaro avoided it in the nick of time and swiped at him with a bone sword which he blocked. Kimamaro panted breathing hard having just made it in time. He had sensed what was going on and got out of the hospital despite the attempts to hold him back and made his way there. Forcing his body to go and push it beyond its limits in order to get here. HMPH, I can tell just by looking that you don't have much longer left. I know you, you're Kimura's boy. He said with a smirk recognizing him as the son of the Kaguya head. You have his self-destruction tendencies though for ticking me off. Kisame said to him and swung at him and Kimamaro blocked it but staggered backwards, if he was even remotely healthy he could hold his own but with the condition he was in he knew he likely wouldn't last long against the SCL Nin. Last of the Kaguya and last of the Uzumaki, looks like I'm going to eliminate two clans today. He shouted and swung at Kimamaro who formed several blades out of his chest and blocked the attack and he slashed at Kisame who dodged it. It's been years since someone actually left a cut on me, for that I compliment you. 
Water release. Water shark. He shouted and fired a pillar of water taking the shape of a shark which hit Kimamaro knocking him to the ground. Kimamaro tried to get up but began coughing and clutching at his chest in severe pain. He started to cough up blood as he was having an attack. Now you die, Kisame said and unraveled his sword preparing to kill him. Suddenly before he could he and Itachi were suddenly transported and found themselves inside something a giant red enclosed wall it looked like with acid around them. What trickery is this? He said in surprise. Kisame don't let the acids touch you. Itachi shouted dodging the dripping fluids. Kisame batted away at the walls keeping from being crushed, this way. He said and took off and Kisame followed after him and the two soon saw an opening and exited through it and found themselves facing a white-haired ninja glaring hard at them and with him several other ninjas. Akatsuki, I should have guessed you would have shown up eventually. Jiraiya muttered. Akatsuki. Naruto said not understanding. A organization hidden in the shadows that consists of elite ninjas all of them S-ranked missing nins. Orochimaru was once a member of the group, Jiraiya said to him who looked on. Jiraiya, the toad Sanin. Kisame it is best we leave. Itachi said to him who nodded reluctantly and the two disappeared in a swirl of leaves making their exit. Akatsuki, they've revealed their hand at last. Jiraiya muttered watching them leave. I didn't expect them to appear so soon though. He said as he looked on as several people tended to Sasuke who had a blank look in his eyes as if he was staring into the abyss. He wasn't speaking or anything as they tried to get a reaction out of him but to no avail. Naruto looked on at what happened as the injured were tended to and thinking back of what just happened. Now they were after him as well. Naruto. Jiraiya called out. Come on help me take Kimamaro back to the hospital, we've got to get him back there before it's too late. Jiraiya looked at him and at Kimamaro who was coughing up blood. Sasuke was being tended to as well the boy stunned he couldn't even lay a finger on Itachi. His only hope of living may be her. He thought to himself. The next day, if we're going to save your cousin's life Naruto, there is someone we must find. Jiraiya said to the blonde haired who looked at the unconscious Kimamaro asleep on the hospital bed not moving. The only sound other than the machines was his faint breathing, right now he's barely living, if you can call that living. Sooner or later he will die of the disease he has. He's lucky he didn't yesterday when he saved you. None of the medics here are capable of healing him, nor anyone else in the world most likely. So am I just supposed to give up and let him die? Naruto asked him looking up. No, that's not what I'm saying. There's a person who perhaps has the best swow at saving him and eradicating that disease. Someone who can also heal Sasuke as well as he was affected by Itachi's attack, he'll recover but it will take some time for him to fully heal. But the problem is finding her. Who is she? Naruto asked curious. The slug queen and Sarutobi's third student and my former teammate. Tsunade. Jiraiya said to him with a smile. She's perhaps the greatest medic to ever live, if anyone can heal Kimamaro it's her. Where is she? Let's go. Naruto said standing up. Hold on, that's the problem, no one really knows where she's at as she went around the same time we all went our separate ways. I ain't seen her since after you were born Gaki. I've only heard rumors of where she's been but she's our best swow. There's a number of towns that have casinos and she's likely to be found gambling there. If we find her we'll have to convince her to come back here and heal him. Jiraiya said to him. We still don't have a clue as to where she could be. If we go one place she'd be at another. Naruto said feeling a bit disheartened but Jiraiya only smirked. That's where she's coming in. Jiraiya said and the door opened and in stepped being escorted by two Anbu was to Yuya her hands covered in chakra restraining cuffs. What's she doing here? Naruto asked pointing an accusing finger at her remembering what she did. I've talked to her and she's agreed to help us find Tsunade in exchange for not being executed. I've found out that Orochimaru has also been tracking Tsunade these past years and her most favorite spots to go, Tuyuya knows the information and will give us aid. Won't you Tuyuya-chan? He asked with a smirk to the girl. Up yours you fa Tuyuya started to say but cried out as Jiraiya formed a seal as she felt a sharp pain go through her shoulder near her seal as he had put it on her that he could activate to keep her under control, once she had given her aid and done so he would remove it. Fine, she muttered through gritted teeth and the pain went away. Alright then, remove those cuffs they won't be necessary. Jiraiya ordered and the Anbu did so and she shook herself loose of their hold. 
Naruto glared at her with suspicion not trusting her considering what happened before but he felt he had no choice in the matter, if she knew where Tsunade could be he'd have to put up with it. Alright then, go gather supplies and gear Naruto. We'll leave in the hour. Jiraiya said to the blonde who nodded. He looked back at Kimamaro making a silent vow to find Tsunade and bring her back so she could heal him. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys liked it and support the author while you're at it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs. See you guys in the next video.